What's up, guys? We are live with Beat the Line broadcast, episode 27, UFC 300. I'm your host, Pegasus Picks. I'm here with Key 3 Picks, Javi, and obviously our special guest, Andrew Gumbus. Andrew, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks, guys, for having me. Looking forward to uh, breaking down the card. Oh, well, I'm getting feedback. I'm getting feedback from somewhere. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's get into this card. I mean, what do you guys think of it? Is this going to be the best card of the year? Do we think it's going to be? I feel like it goes two ways. It's either going to be like a lot of knockouts, a lot of action, or it's going to be a snooze fest. I don't know. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad that we get a, a actual pay per view card that's like full of close favorite and like bettable money line spots. I think that that's an exciting part for this card. I hear you. Yeah, man. Too. I mean, I think the card is good for betting, but as a fan, I mean, well, we're we're gonna we're gonna have some fun, that's for sure. But I think we're gonna make money. So, good fights, good cash. It's gonna be great. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's let's get started here. Um, <clears throat> our first fight of the evening. We're gonna go from uh, bottom to top here, following Tapology's order. The first fight is uh, Davison Figueiredo versus Cody Garbrandt. Um, <clears throat> Davis and Figueroa is 22, three and one 36, five, five with a 68 inch reach. Cody Garbrandt, on the other hand, he is, um, let's see, he's, he's 32, five, eight with a 65 and a half inch reach. These guys, you can find Figgy anywhere from minus three Oh five to minus, um, three thirty five. Cody Garbrandt's anywhere from plus two, two fifty five to plus two twenty five. Um, I'll go first since I think I, I, I'm only one here with a bet. Uh, I played Cody Garbrandt here. I think, the, and I played the under two and a half. Um, I think the line is just a little bit too wide, uh, on this fight. Cody obviously has, uh, I think he has a little bit better hand speed. He's going to have the wrestling upside. I think his cardio will be a little bit, uh, will be a little bit better here. Uh, he can get chinned. We've seen it before. Figgy hits hard. It's definitely possible. Also shooting the takedowns that Cody shoots. It's live for that famous uh, Figgy guillotine. That's kind of why I played the under two and a half. I think one of these guys is going to finish one another, especially being the uh, first night of the card. Um, I think if it does go the distance, I think that does favor Cody. Um, so we're kind of covered on both ends with plus 250 on the money line and under 135 on one and a half. Uh, Andrew, you got any, what do you think for this fight? Where do you stand on this one? Yeah, it's interesting because I feel like even though Cody's won his last couple fights, it's almost like the secret's out that he's not what he once was. He's not an elite fighter. Um, he's not going to be a, a main player in this division. But, you know, all that's baked into the line. And Figueredo in his own right, you know, he's getting up there in age. At 125, he used his size, his physicality, his advantage. Up at 135, I don't think he has a lot of those same advantages he once had at 125. Um, so I expect minutes to be close here. Like Figueredo is never a great minute winner, but I give him a pretty sizable hardware edge here. Um, I think he's more durable. I think he has more finishing upside. Um, I, I just see him having the bigger moment. So I'm picking him to win, but no, no bet for me. Joff, what about you? You muted. Yeah, so I agree with you guys. I think the fight is going to be close. I think if you go the distance, we're probably going to see like a, a low volume affair. But um, it's really hard for me to not see uh, Figueredo landing a big shot at some point. And we know that uh, Garbrandt Chin is not very good. Uh, but in his last two fights, he really has not been tested. And he was fighting lower level competition. So now he's, fight he's facing a dangerous guy again. Uh, I, I think F Figgy can be low volume at time, but like his power is super. Like y y y you, I don't think Cody can take too much of a uh, of, of the the shots that Figgy's gonna give him. And I think Cody might try to wrestle, and if he does, uh, maybe Figueredo can can get a submission. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I think the fight's gonna be close until that uh, until Figueredo find the kill shot. That's kind of how I see it. I think uh, I think he's gonna counter him like a straight right a straight right hand, um, and he has good hooks in the pocket. Uh, I think Garbrin kind of need to fight a perfect fight for 15 minutes and mix in the takedowns. Figueredo in his last fight he was like tired and after five six minutes, but then uh, he looked good in the third round. So that was kind of weird um yeah we know that the weight cut is taking a lot from him at 125 now he's older but he doesn't have the same tough weight tough weight cut so 
yeah, man, I feel like he's going to find a KO here. So I, I rather play the KO than playing the money line. Uh, for the money line side, if anything, I think it's Garbrand. Uh, like I said, because if he doesn't finish him, he, he's not going to cover his price tag. That, that's how I see it. Key, anything different? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think that this is a figgy spot. Um, at minus 300 money line, I don't think that you can really justify that um, outside of a finish. So I think that makes the most sense here to play some of the finish props, whether you think that Cody's going to wrestle um, and figgy's going to pull out the guillotine or figgy's going to eventually find him. I think whatever whatever game plan Cody has here, I think that he's just fucked, honestly, just due to what Andrew hit on earlier. The durability gap is a little too wide here, in my opinion. Um I think that if, if Cody wants to push the pace, I think that Figgy's going to find the counter shot. If Cody tries to dance, I, I think that that may work for a few, first few minutes, but eventually he's going to touch the chin. Um, and I, I don't think that we have to be scientists to figure out bad chin versus one of the hardest punchers ends in bad, bad things. So um, I think there's a Figgy spot by KO. All right, guys, I'm the only one on Cody here. Let's go into our next fight. Next fight is uh, another good one. We got uh, <clears throat> it's Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Uh, Jim Miller is 37, 17, and zero. Um, he is 40 years old. He's 5'8 with a 71 inch reach. Uh, he's fighting Bobby Green, who's 31, 15, and one. He is 37, 5'10 with a 71 inch reach. Uh, the odds on these two guys, you get Jim Miller anywhere from plus 158 to plus 139. You can get Bobby Green anywhere from minus 175 to minus 192. Um, I'm going to have uh, Drav, you start us off on this one. I mean, do you think that um, Jim Miller has what it takes to win, you know, UFC 300 after winning, obviously, UFC 100 and UFC 200? Does he complete the trifecta here? Uh, it will be pretty badass if he does, in all honesty. Uh, to me, this, art, uh, this fight is kind of hard to predict because on one hand, I feel like Bobby Green is the better striker, is the better minute winner, and he has the better cardio. Uh, I think as the fight goes on, we have to favor him. Uh, but I think Miller is live for a knockout in this spot. And Bobby Green used to be this durable guy. And now that he's, he's older and he took a lot of damage, it seems like his chin is not as good anymore. Uh, he got knocked out against Drew Dober. And then he got knocked out pretty, pretty badly against uh, Jalen Turner last time out. Like that was a very bad stoppage. And uh, that, that was, I think, only a couple months ago. I think four months ago, if I'm not mistaken. Now he's coming back. Uh, yeah, it's just hard for me to pick either side because, like I said, I think if they go the distance, Bobby Green is probably winning a decision. Um, I, I think last time that Miller won a decision was like, what, five, six years ago or something. Um, but he's a good finisher. Uh, but again, if you look at the, um, the level of competition Bobby Green, the, that Bobby Green has been facing lately, like mo most of them are top 15 guys, and Miller on the other end fought uh, very, very low-level guys, but he did finish him, so props to him, but in some of these fights, he got hurt, so yeah, man, uh, it's just hard for me to predict this fight personally. I, I think Bobby Green probably wins, but there is no way I can lay this type of chalk um, in this spot, especially after a bad knockout loss. Uh, I think it might be a good way to play the fight live. I think Miller is probably going to win the first round. Um, or, yeah, maybe you, if you finish him, I think it's going to come early. So if you can if you can get Bobby Green at plus money after the first round, uh, it might be a good bet. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to pick him to win, but I'm not really confident either way. Andrew, what do you think? <clears throat> if you hear my dogs fighting in the background, just, just ignore <laughs> it. But, um, yeah, I think this is an interesting matchup because, like, on paper, Bobby Green should have a ton of advantages. His striking stats way better than Jim Miller's. He's been fighting way better competition. Like j just th those two gaps alone make it for – it has to be him or pass for me. But there are some concerns. He hasn't looked great in his last few fights. Like the last time he's had a so-called like great performance has been three to five fights ago. Um, he's obviously got knocked out four months ago. Um, on the other hand, Jim Miller, you know, he's – more than up there in age he's 40 he's kind of had a little bit of a cream puff schedule like f fighting guys like Cerrone on his last fight or Jesse Butler on short notice I, I think Green's gonna win there are some hesitations obviously um due to the regression of Bobby Green and the potential damage 
from his last fight. But I, I make him a little bit bigger of a favorite here. Key, what about you? Key's gone. All right. Um, I'll take it from there. Oh, wait. No, he's back. Key, what are you thinking? Uh, yeah. So I think Jim Miller um, is Jim Miller a pass here. Um, I think that you can't justify Bobby at this chalk uh, after knockout loss like that, where he probably got KO two to three times, it felt like. Um, before that, it's not like he's, his chin was looking great. I mean, we saw the uh, the Drew Dober fight. That headbutt KO from um, from Jared Gordon, I mean, he's just getting tested over and over again. Um, I think KO line is around plus 550 still on DraftKings, I believe. Um, I think that that's a good spot to play. Um, otherwise, I don't really see a confident way to play this fight consistently. I don't think that Miller's going to like practically grapple well here. So I think that this is a chaos spotter pass. Yeah, I, I've obviously been riding with Jim Miller for a long time now. Keep playing him at dog odds. Wasn't going to jump off here. I think this is one of those fights that, um, you know, I think he's Jim Miller's kind of got a, re- a slight wrestling upside. I think he has a definite BJJ upside. Um, his chin is definitely more durable. Obviously he's had a weaker strength of schedule. He's had a, uh, he's probably older in age, even though Bobby Green's not younger. I think we have a chance where, you know, this kind of looks like where, uh, the Drew Dober fight where, you know, Bobby Green beats up on Jim Miller until he doesn't and gets caught and gets finished. So that's kind of where I think this is. I kind of like keys angle a little bit better. I mean, I played plus 165 on Jim Miller. But KL plus 500 sounds pretty damn good, too. So I may sprinkle on that as well. All right, moving on to our next fight. We got Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. Um, Marina is 17, 3, and 2. He's, she's 36, 5, 6 with a 65-inch reach. She's fighting Jessica Andrade, who is 25 and 12. She's 32, 5, 1 with a 62-inch reach. The odds on these two women, Andrade is anywhere from minus 126 to minus 135. Rodriguez is anywhere from plus 119 to plus 105. So, Key, we talk about you're our guy for low-level girl fights. I kind of think this is just, is Andrade going to be able to impose her will and bully Rodriguez, or is Rodriguez just going to beat up Andrade on the feet? Yeah, it's just, it's kind of funny. Um, shout out to everybody who tailed that Nora Cole bet uh, from last week. Um, I think that this is a Andrade spot. Um, I think it's a really good fight. I think it's a close fight. Um, I personally got Andrade at plus 100 on Bravada um, earlier in the week. I, I think that she's the side. Um, here, Rodriguez is questionable in multiple ways. I mean, w- women's MMA age isn't too crazy of a factor. Um, Rodriguez is about to turn, uh, I believe, 37 in a, in a couple weeks. Um, she had a career best performance against uh, Michelle Waterson last time out. Um, and I'm not a very big believer in Michelle's skills, especially at this point in her career and the wrong weight class for most of her career. Um, and time and time again, we've seen Rodriguez just show bad takedown defense, bad uh, fight IQ. I think that at this price, you're kind of praying that Andrade does not wrestle at all. Um, and I'm not saying that Andrade is going to put together a full Division One wrestling game plan for this fight. Um, but I think that she's going to mix it in. I think she's going to make Rodriguez pretty uncomfortable at times. I don't think that Rodriguez is going to get the fight that she wants. And I, I, I keep on hearing people talk about Andrade just looking bad and stuff. Keep in mind, two of the fights that she lost last year were on short notice. Tatiana Suarez, we knew, was a terrible matchup for her. She still took that on short notice. Same thing with Blanchfield. Um, and in January, she, I mean, had her probably one of her career best performances in a striking master class against Lauren Murphy to start the year. So I, I think that Andrade is a side here. I think the physicality difference is pretty wide here. I think she's going to crash the pocket. I think that she's going to make this fight kind of ugly. And I think that she has a grappling upside. So at plus odds, it was kind of a no brainer for me. I think that she's good probably to about 145, 150 range. Nice. Uh, Drive, you go next. What do you think for this one? Yeah, I agree with Key that Andrade is a side, but um, uh, at the current price, minus 135, minus 140, I don't really know because it's kind of tricky because on the one hand, uh, if you go back two fights ago, maybe, people, including me, thought she was done because she was showing up for paychecks and she looked kind of washed. Like, she didn't want to be in there and uh, she was not, like, in her last couple of fights, she was not mixing the, the 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 wrestling too. So 
Now I'm looking back into who she was fighting and why she was not mixing the takedowns for this fact particular matchup. Because if she wrestle, I think that she's going to look like probably a big favorite. And now I'm like, whoa, but why is she not wrestling these like last couple fights? But now if you're looking like Mackenzie Dern, uh, Tatiana Suarez, um, and then the Blanchfield fight, of course, the Jan fight only lasted two minutes. Lemos fight only lasted one minute. Calvio fight, she knocked him out and then knocked her out in the first round. In the Murphy fight, she beat up, she beat her up pretty badly. So she was fighting a lot of grapplers. I think that's why she was not wrestling. Um, I'm not saying she needs to wrestle to win, but if she does, I think that she's gonna look like probably a big favorite. We know that Rodriguez taking on defense is not good good. I don't think her get up is very good either. Uh, she has good submission defense, though I'll say that. But um yeah, man, it's kind of tricky because on the feet at distance, I feel like Rodriguez can look very good. But Andrade is gonna cause a fight. I think they're gonna they're gonna bang. Feel like UFC 300, and we know that they, they they've been they they both been finished multiple times, especially Andrade. Like she's she tends to be kill or be kill, and the under 2.5 is at plus 135, which I think it's a way to play the fight personally, r- rather than laying chalk on Andrade. I feel like she can get a finish. I think she can get finish also. So, yeah, man. To me, it's kind of under a pass. Uh, I don't. I, I can't lay Andrade chalk here. Um, and I, I think at on at the under at plus one thirty five. I think is the way to go. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna play it. I don't know what you guys think about it, but um, yeah, man. I, I love some violence for this fight. <clears throat> uh. I, I definitely think the side is. I think I'm pro- I would probably play uh, Marina Rodriguez at dog odds here. I think um, if Andrade doesn't get her striking or wrestling going and she tries to stand up on the feet, I think Marina Rodriguez is going to pick her apart, whether it be, you know, in the clinch. Um, she can be the bigger girl, more physical girl, I think. A lot of people are going to say Andrade is a bully, but she's a 5'1 bully, not a 5'6 bully. Um, and physicality is usually a pretty big deal in girls' fights. I think she'll have the better striking overall. I think it'll look better over time. I think that's the side I would take if I were to play one, but I have no bet. Andrew, what are you thinking for this? Yeah, this is another good matchup because on one hand, Marina Rodriguez, extremely good technical striker, um, but she is, like you guys mentioned, getting up there in age. There's some holes in her defensive grappling. Andrade, not as technical on the feet, not nearly as technical at range. I think she'll struggle, but I think she her massive advantage is here are pure physicality like she's just a brute and i think she could kind of walk through what marina's throwing at her and the more she gets on the inside the better uh, if anyone's gonna get takedowns here it's her so i'm I'm picking her to get it done i think uh she should be a little bigger of a favorite nice all right next fight jalen turner versus renato moicano money moicano uh jalen turner he's 14 and 7 he's 28 6 3 with a 75 and a half inch reach Moicano, on the other hand, is 18, 5, and 1. He's 34, 5, 11 with a 72 inch reach. Right now, the action on these two gentlemen, you get uh, Turner anywhere from minus 235 to minus 255. Moicano anywhere from plus 203 to plus 170. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to have you start us off with this fight. Do you think this is, uh, do you think Renato's chin is going to hold up here, or do you think uh, Jalen Turner finds the finish? Yeah, I think it's one of those two things. Um, Moicano, really good jujitsu, elite back taker. He is getting up there in age. He's too hittable. He it, when he gets extended in striking exchanges with hard hitters, you know, it, it, it causes him issues. Turner on the flip side, his length causes his opponents big issues. He's athletic, he's explosive, he hits hard. We have seen him get taken down before. Um, I don't think he's great on bottom. So I do think if Moicano does take him down, he's going to put him in danger. So it's kind of like one of two things in my mind. I think either Turner knocks him out or Moicano submits him. It's tough for me to say which one's going to happen. I I think, you know, gun to my head, I'd take Moicano's submission here just because I do think that he's really skilled at getting to those back takes. Um, it's just a matter of how he deals with Turner's size from there, because when you're grappling someone that long, it's tough to get them to the mat. Um, but yeah, I mean, Turner could very well knock him out. He's a big hitter. Moicano keeps his head on the center line. And yeah, I, I'm going to pick Moicano here. It's a, t- it's a tricky fight. I could see it going either way. I could see Turner dusting him in a minute. I could see Moicano, you know, snatching wow. the neck. 
Okay, I feel like that's gonna that's gonna be a good take for the week. I feel like I'm hearing everyone taking Jalen Turner for the most part. It's mm-hmm. pretty good. <clears throat> Key, what do you got? Yeah, I think that uh, I think that Turner's a side. Um, like Andrew said, I think that there's definitely some grappling upside here for uh, Moicano, but I think that that's about as far as it goes here. Um, he looked honestly horrible, in my opinion, against Dober. Uh, the fact that Dober tricked that fight off is kind of funny in hindsight. Um, but yeah, I, I think that moicano has been chinny. Um, he's only getting older. Turner hits like a truck. We saw what he did to the last old man he saw in December. Um, so hopefully I, I think that he gets it done here. I got minus 185 on DraftKings. That stuck there for a little bit. Um, I think there's also some ways I played him on prize picks, better, uh, fancy, all of that. So I think there's, there's some ways to get creative with it. I know Drop got a good number on a sub prop. So, uh, yeah. Drop, tell us about this sub prop. What number did you get? Yeah, I mean, I did bet it early, but I didn't track anywhere because it moved instantly. They, they opened it at plus 12, tw- plus, tw- plus 1200 at, at opener, but they closed the lines and they opened it back at like plus 900. I was able to put a little something into that, but yeah, I don't think he's going to submit him. I think he's going to knock him out. But like at first, I think the knockout was minus 180 and the sub was plus 1200. I mean, I can see a scenario where Turner hurt him and Moicano shoot for legs and get club and sub. We know that Turner loves to to submit people. Moicano is a very high level grappler. I don't think he's gonna get submitted. More likely, he's probably gonna die on the feet uh, because he's a good striker, Moicano. I don't think he's bad at striking distance, but the problem is he doesn't have a good chin and he get touched up because he, he trusts his striking a little bit too much. So in this case, if he does, like if he strike, if he strike with Turner early, I don't think it's gonna end well. Turner, I mean, he's a big, big dude for the division, and he's super dangerous. So um, I feel like at some point he's gonna touch up Moicano. I don't think Moicano's gonna be able to take him down personally uh, at first. Like I think Turner takedown defense is improved now, uh, but when he gets tired, that that's where he kind of struggled. And like uh, Andrew said, he's not very good off his back. But yeah, I mean, I, I think his, his wrestling look improved uh, in the Gamrat fight. I bet him in that fight. He was a big plus money dog. Uh, I think he won that fight personally based on damage. Uh, but now against Moicano, it's a little bit different because Moicano's not as good of a wrestler as Gamrat, but he's a better dropper and he's better at controlling people to the ground. And he's a better guy with the rear naked choke and everything. We know that Dan Ucker had that guy with the rear naked, the, the rear naked choke and they're the round handed. But uh, people are going to talk about the Dan Ucher fight. But the thing is, I mean, Dan Ucher, he took a shit ton of damage at that fight. Like he got w- what? I think he, he got his nose broken and a part of his face broken with the kick or something. If I'm not, I, I yeah. think it was something like that, right? Yeah. Orbital bone and an arm, I thought, right? Yeah. I mean, he landed some crazy shot in the first seven minutes and Ucher's a dog. He was able to take everything and then Turner was kind of tired and he, he kind of quit on himself in that fight, in my opinion. I had fight go to distance at like plus 250, plus 275. <laughs> I was, I, I thought at the end the fight was over, uh, but he still survived. Uh, I, I think he learned from that. I think he learned some lessons in that fight that he, he's not going to be able to. Uh, I, <laughs> I yeah, they like your beard, be, Drav. I, I don't think he's going to be able to um, to take the damage that Turner is going to give him in that fight. Um, and we know that Dober, he, he put it on, on, on skates and Turner is probably one of the most dangerous guy on the entire division. So yeah, man, I, I, I'm awaiting because I want to see where the KO prop goes. If more money came in on the sub, if I can get plus 100 or minus 110 on the KO, I feel it's pretty decent. If not, if not, you can play Turner run one, Turner run two. That's kind of how he wins. All his finishes are in the round, the first round or the second round. And he has never won a decision, 0 and 4, but three of them were split decisions. So when he's not finishing people early, uh, most of the, m- more often than not, it goes to a split kind of decision. So, yeah, man, I think Mokano need to survive the seven minutes of L and then get get, get his back and submit him or ride, r- ride the round, ride the decision. But yeah, at current price, uh, I can't really play, I can't really play Turner at minus 225, but I think. If he wins, he's probably going to finish. Uh, you, you need to pick sub or, uh, or or KO at this point. Yo, Drop, people want to know what you use, wax or oil for your beard? Both. Both. Nice. <laughs> <I'm just> right. 
right. So <clears throat> I, uh, Pegasic, Pegasox, that's me. Um, I got Jalen Turner money line minus 130. So I don't know how much I suck. I don't care what it is. It is what it is. It was dropped on DraftKings, teased it out early. Did I track it? Of course I did. Cause why not? It's America. You do whatever you want. Um, I think he's a side. Um, I think he's got longer strikes. The teep kicks up in the middle are going to be an issue for uh, Moyakano. I think, obviously, the heavy hands and striking, he was hit a lot. Um, the, don't even know what that means. But it's busted out like, oh, word. I guess it sounds like he got it. I'm more than happy. See, that's why I tracked it, even though it, it wasn't. you're not supposed to. Um, but either way. Um, I think he wins by finish. I think, you know, the team kicks, I just think this is just gonna be too much for more Connell. I kind of think this is a setup spot for Turner, honestly. Um, and he does have the grappling. I think to keep up with him, obviously, except if more Connell gets on his back with a good back take, let's move on to the next fight. <clears throat> this one, this one's probably like the people they were saying before, this is kind of like the people's main event. This is a uh, Sadiq Yusuf versus, you know, everyone's Lord and savior, Diego Lopez. Diego Lopez is 23-6-0. He's 29-5-11 with a 72-and-a-half-inch reach. Sadiq Youssef is 13-3. He's 35-9 with a 71-inch reach. So, um, Drav, I'm going to have you start us off first. Do you think Lucif's, uh, or Yusuf is going to be able to stay strong here? Or do you think the, the pace of Lopez breaks him, and is he going to get a chance to chin Sadiq? Um, it's kind of hard to say if Lopez is going to be able to find a finish in this spot, but I, I think he needs a finish to win the fight, that's for sure. Um, I feel like based on what we know and what I've seen on tapes, I think the, the wrong fighter is favorite in, in this fight. I think it should be flipped, personally, just because I, I think Sodic is going to be the, the better minute winner. He's way better defensively. He fought better competition. He's a much better striker. It's, he's much better defensively. And, um, yeah, man, I, I think his grappling is solid. He's a black belt. He's, fi he's, fi he's um, training with uh, good grapplers in, in his camp. And the other thing is, Stodic, he, he doesn't really shoot takedowns. That's the first part because Lopez kind of rely on people shooting takedowns and then you play off his back and that's how he gets his submissions. But he's not really shooting takedowns, Lopez, either. So I think for Lopez to get on top, he's going to need to, like, hurt hurt Yusuf on the feet and then gets on top or he's going to need to shoot takedowns maybe he's going to be able to get Yusuf to the ground I think Yusuf has good takedown defense but what is more impressive to me is his get up game uh he spent like no times on on the ground when he gets taken down he's right back up um I I, I think that uh but I don't rate Lopez as a, as a wrestler that's the thing like, I don't think he's a good wrestler I think he's a phenomenal grapper I think he's very dangerous and I think he's an okay striker He's dangerous on the feet. He put a lot of pressure, but he's a punching bag. Like he's not like on the feet. He's not. Um, he, he's not that good of a striker. He's just decent. And we have seen Yusuf get cracked a couple of times. But to be honest, I feel like the chin concern are a little bit over overblow um, in this particular fight. Like he got hurt in some of these fights. Like I think he got hurt four times in the UFC so far across across like nine fights. And across like more than 100 minutes in the cage, he got hurt four times against good strikers for the most part. Um, but his recovery is very good. I I mean, he gets hurt, but he's right back into it. Uh, I think the leg kick's gonna be a, a problem for Lopez in this fight. He doesn't check leg kicks. Just ask uh, Mike Davis if you guys didn't watch that fight back. I, I think you should. That was a banger. I think that was one of the best fights I've watched for the Now White Contender series. So basically, uh, use if he almost finished him twice in that fight in the first round and in the third round and he, he was like his leg the mike davis legs were done like he hurt him bad um he, he dropped him in the first round he beat up his leg and uh mike davis couldn't even stand at, at first uh, at the end of the fight he almost got tko with leg kicks in the third round so i was looking into tapes to see how lopez deal with them it doesn't really check leg kicks so i think that's going to be a good weapon for yusuf in this fight um and yeah i feel like i don't really see i don't really see lopez knocking him out i, I guess he could hurt him but i don't really see him knocking him knocking yusuf out and um yeah man i feel like yusuf's gonna be the minute winner i think he can get a knockout himself though because lopez is very hittable like i said and uh yusuf's gonna be the much more uh the, the the much better striker way more technical way better defensively um 
I think Lopez is kind of sub or bust. Maybe it sounds a little bit crazy because he's the favorite and he's live to get a submission. But to me, I think I think Yusuf grappling is is good enough to a don't shoot takedown, <laughs> b stay on the feet, or if you get taken down, you get right back up. And on the feet, I think you have to make Yusuf a pretty pretty sizable favorite in this fight. Um, I know I know Lopez is dangerous. I know everybody loves him now. He's everybody's favorite fighter. I get that, but I mean. You, you, you kind of have to go against the hype. You have good to go against the recency bias. I feel like we have both in this line. That's why Yusuf is the favorite. Everybody were playing him against Barboza at big chalk. And now everybody's playing Lopez at chalk uh, when he's a guy that needs finish to win fight most of the time. Uh, so, yeah, I don't agree with that. And, I mean, he was beating the shit out of Barboza. And then he, I think he broke his end after the first round. And he gassed out a little bit. But, like, that was nothing <laughs> crazy. They put on a banger. And, and he... I think this fight could have been stopped early and he got hurt with like a spinning well kick by Bar by Barboza, you know? So yeah, I feel like there's so much recency bias, so much hype into the Lopez line. I don't think he should be the favorite. And then he, I think you should go back and watch um, Lopez original fights. I think it's important. Um, one of the fight that I've watched that was the Nate Richardson fight. He lost a split decision only two years and a half ago. Uh, Richardson is a striker, a little bit like Yusuf, but he's not as good as a striker, in my opinion. But like, he has a similar style, you know, and he has decent takedown defense. So in this fight, uh, it was very close. But I mean, they both kind of hurt each other. But uh, Lopez got some takedowns, but he didn't got, he didn't control him for a long period of time. Richardson was able to win the minute on the feet, and he won a split decision that was very close. Uh, and yeah. So I, I just think that Yusuf is the side. I think he should be minus 150. So uh, I think he might get a knockout. But if the fight go to decision, uh, I favor him heavily. Okay, sounds good. Um, Andrew, the people want. what do you think for this fight? The people want a winner. What's the winning side here? This is a tough one because I feel like it's a high-variance fight. You know, Lopez, absolutely absurdly good jiu-jitsu. Like, the way he, the way he submitted... Um, Oh my god, I'm blanking on the guy's name. The, uh, Gavin Tucker. The way he submitted Gavin Tucker was crazy. Like especially considering Tucker is like a legit black belt, he did everything right in that. And it, it in that situation, it just still didn't work out. We haven't seen much of Lopez wrestling, but pretty much none in the UFC. He's had a couple quick fights. He's had a couple fights with people who like wouldn't really make sense to shoot on, or who um, he would wouldn't be able to shoot on. I dug back into his regional tape a little bit. His wrestling technique isn't great. Like, it's definitely not. But he's the type of guy that it could only take one. Um, Yusuf, on the other hand, he's a he's explosive. He's a pretty good striker. His grappling seems okay. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's bad. Um, the, the difference for me on the feet is although Yusuf is the better striker, I think there's a pretty big durability edge, a good hardware edge in favor of Lopez. Like, Yusuf will be winning minutes for sure, I think. But Lopez has serious power. Like we saw how he knocked out past Abatini. Yusuf, I think, is a little bit chinny. Um, I don't know. It, it's a hard one to pick. I'll, I'll pick Lopez, but it wouldn't surprise me if Yusuf, you know, looks like a comfortable favorite. It wouldn't surprise me if Lopez knocks him out. It wouldn't surprise me if Lopez, you know, submits him and it seems easy. It's just one of those fights for me. It's hard to call, but I'll pick Lopez. Nice. And Key, what, let's talk about it. What are you thinking? What are you, what are you uh, what do you got for this one? Yeah, I, I think that this is um, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting text. Um, I think that this is um, Jesus. People Christ. want you to water your plant, bro. Hey man, my plants are doing fine, but um, <laughs> but no, I think that there's a Lopez spot. I'm not Lopez, Yusuf spot. Um, I Lopez isn't a guy that, in my opinion, anybody should be betting at favorite money. Um, I, I think that he makes bad decisions. I think that he um, is constantly looking. Jesus Christ. I think that he's got constantly. Fans over here, Key. You got fans, bro. Don't be shy because you got yeah. fans. Let's go. But, uh, I, I think that this is a um, – I think Yusuf is a minute winner. I'm surprised to see his KO at plus 425. Um, I personally played the money line at plus 142. I'm happy with that. I thought that he would have switched to favorite by now. Um, but I guess everybody is buying the hype on Lopez. Um, I, I understand he's had some exciting fights, but you can't ignore the regional tape. You can't ignore the fight versus Brito. Um, I, I think that he constantly makes bad decisions. He'll constantly play off of his back. I don't think that Yusuf gets subbed here. Um, we, we've seen him uh, consistently, and I know his takedown defense percentage doesn't look great, but every time that they're counting those takedowns, he's popping right back up. 
Um, so we get up game. I think that his takedown defense is fine. Not that Lopez is a good wrestler anyways. Um, the only reason why I don't think this is like some crazy max bet um, for Sadiq is just the fact that his he has a funny chin. Um, but outside of that, I think this is this is a Sadiq spot. Um, it, unless Lopez can just create insane chaos and continue this crazy ass streak, um, I, I think that the hype is about to fall right here. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I I agree. I think I think Sadiq's the spot here. I think people are way too high on Lopez just because you know he's a fan of the people. Um, everyone loves him. He put, brings an entertaining fight. I think that the issue that lies obviously is Yusuf's chin, but I mean, if the odds are that he doesn't get chin, where does he lose this fight? I think he's better on the feet. I think he has the better control on the ground. Sure. Uh, obviously Lopez is live for a sub of sorts, but I just kind of think, uh, Yusuf's aside here, especially at plus odds, I'm probably gonna be looking to play it at some point. Um, <clears throat> let's go on to our next fight. Uh, Andrew, you're you're a Yankees fan, right? You like the Yankees or no? I do. I have the game on in the back. I got the game on right they're here losing. too. Are you, are you watching this shit? Yeah, they're, they're losing, dude. If to the Marlins, the worst team. I, I, I saw Boone switched our lineup today when we're ten and two. He decides to change the lineup for no reason, and here we are. I know. It's fucking crazy. I know. All right, next. Uh, this our, our Yank, <laughs> me and Gomez's Yankee talk would be better, more entertaining than talking about Holly Holm and Harrison. <laughs> next fight is Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. Holly's fifteen and six. Kayla Harrison's sixteen and one. Um, Kayla is 33-5-8 with a sixty-six inch reach. Holly Holm is forty-two five-eight with a sixty-nine inch reach. It's kind of crazy that she's the oldest fighter on the card, and it's not Jim Miller. Um, the odds for these two girls, you can get Kayla Harris anywhere from minus 395 to minus 480. You get Holly Holm anywhere from plus 360 to plus 320. Key, as you always say, is it nasty work betting on Kayla Harrison or putting Kayla Harrison in a parlay at minus one four or minus three 440? Do you think the battle is going to stop at the weight cut and she's going to have cardio issue or issues? Or do you think uh, Holly Holm is going to be able to outpiece her with the footwork? Yeah, um, I think the Harrison one makes weight. Um, I'm, I'm willing to bet on that with anybody here. Um, I think that Harrison makes weight pretty, pretty convincingly, too. I think that she's going to be just fine. I think that the weight concerns are way overblown just because people think that she looks huge. Um, and she definitely. Yeah, they want to see if that is. shit's wavy. <laughs> They're crazy locks only. But um, I, I think that. Um, I think that Harrison is a side here, um, but it's honestly pretty hard to play her on books. Um, I personally played um, played her on better on the better app um, over fancy. That's crazy work. Lens stats is nuts. <laughs> What's going on, bro? Lens stats is nuts. Um, hey, how tall are you? I'm six three. And what's your what's your wingspan? I don't know my exact wingspan, but I got long arms. I mean, okay, I hope, yeah, I played. So you're the same size as Jalen Turner. You got these long arms. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but not nah, uh, in all seriousness, though. I, I think that Harrison's a side. I don't feel comfortable parlaying her. Um, I know people are looking into her PFL career. Pacheco is better than just about anybody you're going to see in the UFC. I think that she's also an absolute matchup nightmare for Harrison. So I don't take that loss against her at all. And she's beat Pacheco before. Um, I, I think that there's a chance that home could possibly dance. And if her takedown defense just looks absolutely amazing, then maybe maybe she shakes out a weird decision. Um, but but I, I think that that's crazy work. Um, but <laughs> I, I think that Harrison's aside, I think that she gets it done here. Um, I, I'll pass it to uh, Drop. Drop, go ahead. What do you think? I mean, you, you think Kayla Harrison is going to finish Holly home, right? I, I don't know, bro. Like, uh, I'm not picking only on for people saying in the chat. I don't really know, but the money line side is on for sure for me. I, I can't really, I, I think there's some unknowns on the Irison side that we can deny. First of all, I want to see her on the scales. I want to see how she looks. That's the first thing. Um, and then like she's making her UFC debut uh, on a big, big stage. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah, she fought by Pacheco, which I think she's a good fighter. Pacheco, she beat her twice and then lost this, the third fight. Um, but like the other fighters that she fought were, were not good. I see it. <laughs> she fought girls that were low level. So now the problem with Oli Ohm is she's 42 years old. You know, that's kind of my problem. And I think Harrison's going to be so much more physical than her. 
uh it's kind of crazy like Arison is built like a man like she is big <laughs> you know she's super she looks to be super strong and i don't think she ever made 135 in her entire career if i check correctly i don't think she did so even if she made weight how she's gonna perform in the fight our cardio is gonna hold up uh that's that's thing that we don't know about so to pay minus 450 or whatever she is i think it's a bit crazy so if you like her and if she does cover that price tag i think she does need a finish so you can play itd i guess uh like props play i think round three decision makes sense um and yeah i mean only home is live to outstrike her on the feet if she can de defend the takedowns for sure but um yeah man i don't know what i'm gonna do with this fight i guess my pick is only uh no i tell you uh, i mean arison but if she's gonna if she is she gonna finish or not i'm not too sure but she needs to finish if she wants to cover that price tag and make a statement bro if you've seen brock lesnar's daughter he already the already looks like he had a kid with kayla harrison bro even his daughter is like an olympic like pole thrower or whatever the fuck they do on the track i don't know what that's called uh gombus anything different from you bro do you think kayla harrison finds a finish or are you playing holly Holm here at crazy odds i've got nothing here i, I do think <laughs> um harrison's finishing uh equity is a little like over exaggerated here you know she went to decision against Aspen Ladd. She went to decision against Mocha Tinear or whatever the hell her name is, <laughs> EFL. Um, you know, there's a, obviously a big age discrepancy here. I thought Holm looked pretty rough in her last one. If it was the Holm of like five years ago, I would pick um, I would pick Holm as the side. But just the way she looked last fight, I would lean over more than anything just because I feel like Harrison's finishing – like I said, is being a little bit over exaggerated, but she is the one that's more physically imposing. She has the wrestling upside. Then again, she hasn't fought anyone, so it makes it really hard for me to lay a price like this. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, honestly, I was looking into Kayla Harrison props uh, for a little bit. I was looking into the ITD, but honestly, if she can't get Holly Holm down and Holly Holm, you know, stays elusive, stays on the outside and works away around the cage. And like you said, looking back at that Aspen Ladd fight, why can't Holly Holm win this fight? Why can't she win at least two rounds out of three? If she does get taken down, she's a little lost off her back. People are saying Kayla Harrison with, you know, the elbows and stuff like that. Um, Cause now she can use elbows. It's going to be different. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I think like, like you said, I think Holly Holmes aside on the money line. Um, I like the overplay as well. Cause everyone's going to think this is going to go under cause it's going to be a ground and pound. I don't know. I think I'd play the over home kind of like you said, Gombus, but I'm probably going to stay off this fight. Just kind of watch it. Yeah, the, the over is minus 155. I feel like it's pretty decent as well. Don't you get, don't you guys think mine at like 62%, 61. Okay. Oh, uh, Job, did you not go? Yeah, I did. Oh, then there's, there's, there's one to call you cute. That's all. Um, okay. All right. <clears throat> next fight. Let's get into the next one. We don't want to waste too much time on Kayla Harrison at home. Um, next fight we got is Calvin Cater versus – everyone's been calling him Calvin Qatar. I've seen all week. Is it Calvin Qatar? Is it, is, I thought it was Calvin Cater. Is it not? Does anyone I'm know? Not, I'm, not, I'm not too sure. <laughs> all right. uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's Calvin Cater. He's a North. You, you always got these names. You always got these names wrong, anyway, Peg. So it's not a big deal. <laughs> all right, Calvin Cater, the Boston finisher. He's twenty three and seven. He's thirty six, five eleven with a seventy two inch reach. Aljamain Sterling is coming up to one forty five. He's twenty three and four. He's thirty four, five seven with a seventy one inch reach. Um. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to have you break it down for us first. Obviously, the line here is minus 170 for Sterling and plus 140 to plus 156 for Cater. Um, do you think Aljo can find the takedown here? I kind of think that's the question of the fight. Yeah, um, I, I do. And to go a little bit beyond that, I think that, Al, you know, I, I'd pick Aljo and Sterling in a striking fight with Cater. I know that's probably not a super common oh popular take but if you look at their defensive striking metrics like sterling's is astronomically better than cater he gets hit a ton he's coming off a knee injury sterling you know he's fought the best of the best his last i think his last five fights have been against ufc champs on twice cejudo o'malley um and he won the first round against o'malley which was all on the feet and i think o'malley's a better technical striker than cater 
Um, I also think three round Aljo is really good for him. I think, um, I think the fact that he's able to sprint in three rounds is just a massive, um, a massive positive for Aljo. Cater, he's a good boxer. He's tough. He's durable. But I think Sterling, you know, if anyone's going to get a takedown here, it's him. And if he does get a takedown, it's probably the round or the fight. His back takes, his top game is as good as it gets in the UFC. So I think he gets it done here. I think this is a good uh, good first fight for him at 145 and uh, a hard matchup for Cater. You think he finds the sub by chance? If he gets the back and he gets that figure four, you think he gets the sub here? Or do you think yeah, I don't see why not. He, he's – really dangerous in that position um we've seen we've seen it go both ways right like he got on top of Corey sanhagen and he submitted him pretty much instantly whereas he had yawn and a body triangle for minutes at a time so it, it's hard for me to say for sure but like i don't see why he can't yeah i agree i think so too i kind of think he's live for that if he were to find a finish i could kind of see him winning a decision as well i'm with you here i, I was gonna say I'm, I'm glad you, you brought up that point because when I was watching the tape, I was a little more nervous on the side of like if Sterling gets stuck on the feet, is he going to be able to last? Because, you know, Cater's got a great jab. He's got pretty good cardio. He usually comes with that. He's with that cartel team, so they usually come with a pretty good game plan. So I was a little nervous at first if Aljo gets caught on the feet, but hearing you break it down that way, I mean, I'm more than happy. I played uh, Aljamain Sterling minus 145 money line. Um, I'm definitely happy with that price on this guy coming up in weight and also seeing him today with the pictures. If I'm not sure if you guys saw the media day, but he looks fucking yoked at 145. He didn't have to cut that much weight. He's looking good so far. I don't know. I think I like Algernon Sterling as well. Uh, Key, what do you think? All, all your boys want to hear. What's your take? What, what's your side for this? Yeah, I, I think that this is um, – I think this is a cater or pass spot for me personally. Um, I I think this is a fight that I kind of I just want to know what Sterling truly looks like at 145, what type of pace he sets. Um, I'm I, I you can't for me personally I can't confidently back either guy. Um, Cater has his own questions coming off ACL surgery, last fight being about a year and a half ago. Um, I I think that this is a pass fight for me personally. Um, I, there could be some Aljo sub potential just as is every fight because he does create back exposure so well. But outside of that, I don't really want anything to do with this fight. <laughs> All right. Um, Drav, what are you thinking here? What do you got for this? My yeah, girlfriend says the uh, same thing. I, I, tend to, I tend to agree with Key in the, in the way that um, I, I think it's kind of a tricky fight. Um, just because we don't really know how Aljo is going to perform at 145. He used to be the, the bigger guy at 135. Um, now he's going to be, I mean, he's, he's going to be big and strong still at 145, but um, K- K- Kater's going to have reach and um, he's going to be taller than him. Um, and yeah, I think that the point that uh, Gumbas made about the striking is a little bit interesting because I, I, I agree with the fact that Kater's getting hit a lot. Like he's not good defensively. Um, he does have more power than Aljo, and we have seen Aljo getting cracked a couple times. But yeah, to me, it's the 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 the, the aspect that scared me about the the starting side is if he doesn't submit him, we have seen these judges again scoring damage over control way more lately. So if he gets a body lock, I think if he if he gets if he gets scattered down, which might be hard to do because he does have good takedown defense. But at the same time, the <laughs> dude, what the, but but at the same time, um, he, he has not really faced a grappler like Aljo. Like he's facing striker for the most part. I know that he defended, I think, twenty one out of twenty three takedowns. So that's pretty good. But uh, if you put a little bit more context into it, does Aljo really need takedowns? Like he can ju- he can jump on his back and just ride off the the run with his with his back take. We know that he has a very good back take. And he's either going to submit him or win the round if he does that. But if, like, Ketter get up or he score two minutes of damage before that, it can be a little bit interesting if the fight go over, which I think it will. I think it's going to go to distance. Uh, I think Aljo's going to have a lot of volume on the feet. I think he's going to win some, menu, some minutes. But I think that Ketter's going to win the moments. He's probably going to do He's probably gonna do more, more damage. Um but the question you need to ask is, do you think Aljo is going to get takedowns? If he does get the takedowns, he's probably going to cover his price tag, if not more, because he's going to be live for a sub. But I don't think he's getting a knockout on the feet. 
maybe he can flat him out and TKO him with ground and pound. But um, yeah, man. So uh, I'm not too confident, but I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick Sterling. I think maybe the weight cut is the he's, he's not gonna have as rough for the weight cut at 145, and his cardio might look better. Like Andrew said, the fight, the three rounds is probably uh, is probably better for him. Yeah, slow down in some fights in the in the five rounds fight, like against Cejudo, against Jan. We have seen that before. So the three rounds for him probably better. Um, but I feel like the prize got away from me. Maybe uh, I'm just gonna pass. But I'm picking a starting to win. Nice. All right. So we all pretty much agree on Sterling. So it sounds like he's probably the side here. Let's move on to the next fight. This fight has been questionable all week. Um, the following fight is uh, Yuri Prohaska versus Alexander Rachic. Um, Yuri Prohaska is 29, 4 and 1. He's 31, 6, 3 with an 80 inch reach. Rachic is 14 and 3. He's 32, 6, 4 with a 78 inch reach. Um, actually right now we've, we're seeing now that the Yuri line has just flipped. He's now the favorite on most books, anywhere from, uh, uh, minus 100 or plus 100 to minus 110. And you get Rochich anywhere from minus 115 to minus 109. Um, Drav quickly get us, get us going on this one. What do you think? Do you think, uh, Rochich is going to come back off that injury? I think it was a knee injury. Look good. Set up the leg kicks that we know Yuri struggles with. Or do you think Yuri is going to be too um, um, unorthodox for Rachich? Put the pressure on him and finish him. Where do you think this goes? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, for first of all, I, he didn't switch to a favorite. I, I think I thought that I missed that, but he's still the favorite on most books. I, I think the best price on. Uh, on the the worst price on Proasco is minus one ten. So on most book, he's the underdog still. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Rakic should be fine here. He, I think he's the better striker. He's faster. He's more technical. He's way better defensively. We know that Proasco is a punching bag, <laughs> uh, and I, I think he's more durable than Proasco. I think he has the resting upside. He's gonna win the minutes on the feet. I think he can with some. He, I think he can. Uh, he can have some tough time upside. Um, he did struggle against uh, Blakovich leg kicks and the way Blakovich was shaking the leg kicks, which is the, the most important thing to me. But in this fight, Proaska is not he's not throwing any leg kicks. In fact, he struggled with them and Rakic has good leg kicks. So I feel like Rakic is going to have a lot of success with the leg kicks in this fight. Um, Proaska is very dangerous. He's very unorthodox. He still likes to knock out pretty much any anyone. So Rakic is going to need to be careful. But yeah, we, we, we see every time when we have a guy coming back after a knockout loss in a title fight. More often than not, it doesn't really go well for them after that. So I think that Rakic, even with, with the layoff and the injury, if you look on his Instagram, he looks to be in very good shape. He has been training for the last six to eight months at least because he was preparing for Blakovic, the rematch. And um, yeah, man, I think he's a side. I think um, I think he can win by knockout. I think he can win by decision. I think he has all the resting upside. Uh, I think he's better defensively, like I said. And the leg kick's gonna be a good. Uh, I, I think there's gonna be a good weapon for him. Maybe Prasca wins some big moments, and he's live to catch him as always. But yeah, man, I think Rakic take this. So also, there's a stat. Also, I think it's something like I don't know. Guys coming off a fight after their t- or fighters in general coming off their fight after a title loss, I think they only win like twenty percent of the time or something like that, or fifteen percent of the time. Really? Usually, their their bounce back fight doesn't go well. So that's a positive for Ratchet. Um, Andrew, what do you think? Which side do you feel? Do you feel like Yuri's going to get it done or Ratchet? Uh, I'm picking Rakic here, um, although I do concede that Jerry seems to have magical powers. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, just between the leg kick upside and the wrestling upside, I, I think you have to favor Rakic here. You know, Jerry was getting kicked in the leg by Alex Pereira. It was obviously really bothering him. Um, Rakic is reliable to throw leg kicks. He does it in every fight. Um, Jerry's taken down a bunch by Glover. Like, I, I kind of feel like Jerry's UFC run has been pretty fortunate. Like, he's won a lot of 50-50 fights. And, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like if anyone looks like a big favorite here, it's Rockic. Like, if anyone is going to separate, it's going to be Rockic. Whereas if, like, it's a 50-50 fight, then it could go anyone's way. I just <laughs> I just can't imagine, <laughs> like, 
any scenario where Jiri goes out there and looks like a like a good size favorite. Just just the way he fights, like you know, he's very hittable. He's willing to take one to give one. He's not particularly skilled. He's just you know he's not he's a specimen. He's a freak. But I, I favor Rakichu. Obviously, there's the bit of a concern. Which is the concern for a lot of fighters on this card, honestly, that are coming off an injury. Like, obviously, Rakic, you know, he's coming off a layoff where he blew his knee out. So, is he going to look the same? Is he not going to look the same? I tend to think that these guys wouldn't be coming back. But I do, if if they weren't 100% or near that. But there's no way to know. Just something to consider. But, yeah, I think Rakic gets it done here. Perfect. Um, I kind of agree with you too. I kind of think like a lot of people like the unorthodoxness of if that's even a word of Prohaska. I kind of think, you know, he kind of looks like a total mess at times and like kind of against like we saw against Pereira. Didn't like the leg kicks. He throws these crazy punches. Sometimes they land, but sometimes he's out of like a completely out of position. I think the takedown will be there for Rochich. Only thing I hate about going against Yuri is like we said, Yuri hasn't had like the best strength of schedule in the UFC, but he's one of those guys that finds a way to win. Like Glover kind of had him dead to rights and he somehow got Glover to quit and found a way to win. Um, I'm going to stick with my title loss stat. I'm going to definitely play Rochich here. I think I'm waiting for him to flip at this point. We're watching him flip the dog odds. Um, I usually like to add the V sins. I like to look at the uh, numbers between right now. The number of bets for Yuri are 78% and he's got, 85% 85% of the handle and uh Roch has got 22% of the bets and 15% of the handle. Gomez, you would know this better than me. Is that a good thing that the books kind of stayed and kept Rochich at minus 120, even though all the money in the handle seems to be on Yuri? Is that something like you want to see in a bet or not really? My honest answer is that it literally means nothing at all. Nothing. All right. That's, like, that's actually yeah. good to know. People sell these tools and they talk about this. You don't look into that at all. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Do you think they give like fake numbers, like books give out whatever numbers they want to these just so they get people thinking a certain way? No, I, I no. think, I think the books that do that are being honest. I just don't think it matters because a lot, especially I'm trying to think of how to word this properly because this is something I feel very passionately about. So give me an example of a book that does that. Uh, DraftKings. DraftKings is the one okay. that reports the VSINs, and that's where I got that number from. So, if you're a sharp better, then you will not be allowed to bet at DraftKings. And DraftKings doesn't move their lines based on who's betting there. They're not a market maker. They're. I'm. I'm not trying to like shit on them, but they're pretenders, for lack of a better term. Like they try to stay within the market, right? So they're looking at the screen, they're looking at the eye screen, they're seeing what Bet Online is doing, what Pinnacle's doing, what Circa is doing. They just want to stay close to that number. And if you're if you're beating lines in any sport, DraftKings will will close your account. They will let you bet five dollars a bet. Like so those numbers aren't like an indicator of what's actually happening in the market. It, there are ways to read the market. Like I'm not saying there's not, but yep. it's not by looking at like these and splits. There's certain books that are a lot sharper than others in MMA. And I guess I would recommend if you're looking to do that, to look at Spank Oz or Don Best, see what Bet Online is doing, see what Pinnacle is doing, see what Cirque is doing. But beyond that, see what they're doing like at each limit. Like what Bet Online is doing at $100 limits isn't as important as what bet online is doing when they're at a thousand dollar limits or when they open up the $10,000 limits, then it becomes a little bit different. Like, yeah. When, you know, when, they, when bet on, like bet online is usually first to the market, right. With yeah. you know, everything. When they, when they put, when they put, um, when they put a fight up, it's like, okay, you know, a few of us bet two fifty or five. I, I don't know what their opening limits are, but say it's 500, you know, a few people bet $500, the line's going to shoot up. And then that's kind of, they'll move a number up, up and up till they get some resistance on the other side and small numbers. So for them, it doesn't really matter. Then they're at a position where they could get to a action and then they start to open the limits up a little bit more. And as they open up the limits a little bit more, bigger, better, sharper, betters come in. And that's when it's a little bit more relevant as to like what their, what their lines are doing and what their numbers are doing, because it's a mix. Books want to have, volume like they want to have bets on both sides but they're also 
going to be more willing to take a stance on a fight or a game, depending on what their sharp betters are doing. Like, I think a lot of people misunderstand and think that bookmakers are like, have their own opinion baked into the line. That's never the case. Like I I know a lot of people on the other side of the counter. I don't know one of them has ever been like, Oh, I like this fighter. So I have them minus 200 when the market has minus minus one fifty. Like it just doesn't exist. They're going, they're trying to need the sides that their sharp betters are on they're trying to get two-way action so i I know i just went on a complete tangent there no no it makes it's important for people to know and it's good for people to learn on the show like that's what it comes down to when it comes down to sharp betting and reading a line and finding value in these lines bottom Um, line is the visa stuff is bullshit if you could take one thing out of it what out of everything i said don't even bother looking at that nice all right i like to hear that that's that's something that i think a lot of people will learn to because a lot of people not saying names. Some people give out like line movement tools. They give out, you know, handles, bets, percentages, stuff like that. And a lot of people just take bets on specific bets just because they see like all oh, this money's on this side and the line didn't move or like uh, MMA Twitter when everyone's like, oh, my God, uh, everyone's hammering and putting out tweets for Colby Covington at plus one uh at plus 130 but the lines go in the opposite way so it's like people like think about those ty- type of things which obviously some people chase line movement but that's not always the best thing i don't think and when you see books drop like for example like you said bet online usually gives out lines and i, I use both domestic and bet online pinnacle for whatever reason and i have some offshore books um probably allegedly um and we you look at those and you see the lines that they drop um for example, uh, Jalen Turner dropped on DraftKings at minus 130. Did he ever even get close to that on Bet Online or Pinnacle? I don't really think so. I don't think it was even close to that. So why why does DraftKings continue to try and put lines out first? Are they trying to put lines out so they get some betting volume early? Because a lot of times their lines are way off. And like you said, the sharper bettors can't get their money down there because they're limited. So what do you think the reason for that is? before we get back to the fight card and why everyone's here. Yeah, so a reason why DraftKings would open their lines first is because I don't want to say it's risk-free for them, but they're not giving big limits on that right away. So they could they could use that as a marketing tool to say, hey, we're putting our MMA lines out first, come bet here. But if you go do that and you're getting the best of the number every time, they're going to limit your account or they're going to – let you get a small number down and then adjust the line from there, which there's nothing wrong with, by the way, yeah. that part is nothing wrong with. That's what any book would do. If I, if I open up a book right now, I'd post an MMA fight for $500 and let you guys start betting and see what you guys are doing and adjust my line from there. So to answer yeah. your question, I think DraftKings is doing that as a marketing tool. They're obviously trying to sign up as many customers as they possibly can. It's a good look for them to say, Hey, you know, we're first to the market here. Come bet with us and people will do it. And yeah. then from there, they'll just try to weed you out if they deem you to be <laughs> winning better. I <laughs> said you're a Fed and you got all the answers. That's why you have all the answers. Far from it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get back to the show. Key, I think I you didn't go yet, right, for Rauchix and Peraska before I derailed everything because I got ADD. Yeah, um, nah, I, I think that um, I think the Rakic is aside here. Um, I played minus 125 happily. Um, I, I think that Yuri's run um, has been exciting, but I, I don't think that it's a sustainable run. Um, we saw versus Alex, even though I think that that is just a freak matchup in general for anybody. Um, but I, I think the Rockets is a side. I think the Rockets has all the tools to be champion, honestly. Um, I mean, the guy's good. I mean, he's not overly exciting or anything, um, nor does he have some crazy punching power. But, I mean, he's an athletic, big, skilled guy. Um, I, I think that he fights for a title within – these next year and a half or so honestly yeah he's pretty he's pretty young too i was very surprised to see that and especially coming off the injury as long as he looks good he'll be right back in the talk all right next fight is almost a waste of time um it's bo nickel five and oh 28 six one with the 76 inch reach he's fighting cody prundage 10 and 5 29 six foot with a 72 inch reach uh, I know, uh, Gambas, you got a wrestling background. Why don't you? I'm sure you probably, you're a similar age to me. I'm sure you probably watched a lot of Bo Nickel when he was back at Penn State and, you know, when he's doing all the Olympic and the Team USA stuff. So, what do you think here? Do you think he's going to get the first round, get the takedown in the first round sub? Do you think he's going to go for the ground and pound? How do you think? I'll ask this. How do you think Bo Nickel's going to finish the fight? That's probably the best way to ask this. 
Yeah. So it's funny. I actually like have known of Bo Nickel for like a really long time. People were talking about him, you know, even as like kids growing up, um, like he, he was always going to be a wrestling superstar, really decorated college wrestler. And for me, what, what I think pe- people that are a little bit newer to him in MMA should know is in college wrestling, like at the highest level, pins are so, are so rare like if you go if you go watch the NCAA tournament, you're not going to see a lot of pins because it's just the, the guys are so high level. Even if you're even if you're the best and they're not, like it's very rare. Bo Nickel has one of the high, had one of the highest finishing percentages in like NCAA wrestling history. So he was a he was basically a finisher in a sport at a level where finishers didn't even exist. So to me, that was always like staggering to watch him like pin and tack and get bonus points against guys that are really, really, really good. Um, so I'm really excited about his transition to MMA. I think this, you know, like everyone in the world thinks this should be a layup fight for him. I, I see him getting it done early. I know it's not really reinventing the wheel by saying that, but um, I don't mind as much as some people that they're building him up a little bit slower because he only, he doesn't have many pro fights and a lot of his fights haven't been extended. So I'm yeah. definitely not one of those people that are like, oh, put him in a top five matchup. Like, let's, you know, give him Hamzat. Yeah. Like, one yeah. step at a time, see how he can do. Because although he does have a really high ceiling in MMA, it's no given that he's going to be a superstar in MMA. It's no given he's going to be a UFC champ. Like, we haven't seen much of his striking. We haven't seen too much of his jujitsu. Like, I am trusted he's doing it. And I think wrestling gives you the opportunity to transition pretty well into jujitsu. But like I said, you, there's a lot of unanswered things with him. Like how's his chin? How's his durability? How's his cardio in a fight? So I, I think Nickel's going to get it done early, which I'm sure all of you think too. Um, yep. It's just a matter of how high he can take this thing or how far he can take this thing. Exactly. It's kind of funny how the books got it. I think they got it like minus 150 a piece for one for sub, one for KO at like 150 a piece, right? And then they got minus 650 for inside the distance. So it's kind of like, where do you go from there? I think the way if you're going to play it, I think I like the under one and a half. I think that's the way I put in a parlay and use as a parlay leg if anyone's looking for one. Uh, I think he definitely gets it done with inside of seven and a half minutes. But that's just my take. Drav, what do you think for this? Anything different here? Yeah, not really. I think the question is more, do you think you knock him out or you submit him? Do you think he's in the first round or maybe second round if you want to get some value? And if you think Brundage can survive the first round, which is going to be hard to do. Um, yeah, I mean, Brundage is first round of bust. So if you want to play him KO one or run one, I can't really blame you at these odds. But it's just hard for me to play Bonicol at this price, like by any any way, because it's not really playable, first of all. But also, we don't know about his chin. Like we don't really know how he's gonna take a punch. Like I'm, it has not really been tested so far. Um, so yeah, I don't think Cody Brundage is the one to to finish him and to expose him or anything. I think Nickel is pretty good. Uh, but yeah it's hard for me to see to say if it's going to be a sub or a KO. I tend to think it's going to be a, a submission, but yeah, I don't really want to lay like minus 150 on a submission prop personally. Um, yeah, the, the, I think the KO can be live. We know that Brundage can be a chinny at time and kind of quit in fights. So maybe just cover up and because um, Brundage wrestling in BJJ is not bad. Like it's not, it's not crazy bad, but he, he, he tend to quit in fights. So yeah, I, I guess Bo Nicole gets a finish, but probably in the first round, but do you really want to play first round at like minus 250? <laughs> it's not my type of bet. So maybe you get, maybe you go bow nickel round to you or you go, you, you pick sub or a, or a KO. I think, I think key, you, you're more confident than me about the method. So maybe you can go next. Yeah. Key, what do you got here before I'll just give out the free NBA play for tomorrow, play the Knicks money line against the Celtics. You got it. I think you got it here. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think that this is, a uh, um, sub spot um i mean honestly if we're just looking and talking about the market specifically i mean Bo is his line at sub is closing minus 250 versus woodburn minus 200 against pickett minus 140 against uh donovan beard on contender series um i'm not understanding why the sub was even plus money at first i got plus 100 on fanduel earlier this week i think that that's a great spot um and I, I'm not sure why I said not at least minus 150. 
Um, just because he knocked out Val Woodburn off of what seemed like just a weird ass fight in general um, standing. I think that Bo has some skills standing, but I don't think that he's a guy that's going to put together even three to five minutes straight of strictly stand up where he's looking comfortable. Um, I, I think that whenever he's in grappling sequences, he had a couple opportunities versus Pickett um, to to get off some ground and pound or rise up, posture up and mount and go ahead and lay down some bombs. And he elected to continue to go after that arm triangle. And it seems like he's an absolute gorilla whenever he's on top of you. Um, so I, for all of those reasons, I think that nickel subbed is a spot here. Also, Cody Brundage, I know this feels nasty to say, but Cody Brundage is the best striker that Bo has faced his whole career so far. Um, Cody hits pretty hard. We've never seen nickel get touched before. Um, I'm not expecting him to knock out Cody standing. And so for that reason, I think that you have to go sub for a guy that was willing to transition right into a triangle off of his back and contender series fight. Um, he's constantly looking to go for a sub. So I'm going to ride it out until it, until that goes dead. Nice. I, you, you might get me to join you key. I know I was talking ground and pound the other day, but you might get me to join you. Um, <clears throat> next fight, obviously, this is personally going to be one of my favorite fights of the night. We have Charles Dobronx Oliveira versus Armin Tersukian. Uh, Charles Oliveira, he's 34 and 9. He's illuminated by God. He's 34, 5'10 with a 74 inch reach. He's fighting Armin Tersukian. He's 21 and 3. He's 27, 5'7 with a 72 and a half inch reach. Uh, the odds on these guys right now. You get Charles anywhere from plus 198 to plus 175. You can get Tarsukian anywhere from minus 210 to minus 240. Um, who do I have given? Oh, I have me picking going first. All right. I'll go first and then I'll pass it on. Uh, champion has a name, right? It's Charles Oliveira. I played him against Benny. I've played him against Gaethje. I've played him against Poirier. I played him against Chandler. I can't play him here. The reason I can't play him here is because I think this fight lines up very similar to um, Islam fighting. People are like, why? Because they're both Russian and they're both grapplers. Yeah, that's part of it. But the other part of it is also the wrestling upside from Tarsukian. I don't see him getting subbed. His chin is a little sus at times. So I did play Charles by KO um, plus 800 on DraftKings, I think, for half a unit. I think that's worth a shot because we've seen his chin is bad. If Charles does win, he'll probably try and finish Tarsukian. The sub won't really be there. Armin does have pretty vicious ground and pound. He has great top control. He's got good positional stuff. We've seen Charles' chin not be great. I think uh, Charles has the strength of schedule upside and the dog upside. He's just a little too chinny. Every fight we're watching him, he's got to lose first, then to win. It's kind of like what Nate Train said. It's like, beat my ass and find out. That's pretty much Charles's MO as well. It's just the dog mentality. But um, you got to know when to get off the wagon and stop riding with your boy. And this is the time where I'm going to hop off. I think Armin's the pick. Probably play him in a parlay. Like I said, I gave out Charles Oliveira KO plus 800. That's how I'm going to play Charles if you do decide to play him. And uh, I actually played uh, Armin Tarsukian in a parlay with UConn men's basketball, who obviously already won. So now I'm just waiting for my Armin bet. Um, Andrew, what do you think for this fight? You got a, a specific side you like or an angle you like? Yeah, it's tough because I do think Armin is one of the most skilled fighters, skilled fighters, if not the most skilled fighter in the division. And I do make him the favorite here. But I think the line's a little wide just because Oliveira, like, he tends to fight 50 50. He tends to get into very high variance fights where it's hard for me. Like I bet Makachev at like minus 160 against Oliveira, but that's really the only person that I would lay that price on against him just because he does fight so highly volatile. You know, he marches forward, he can get hit, he could put your lights out, you could put his lights out. He's extremely dangerous on the ground. It's going to be interesting to see what Armin's approach is here. Like, is he going to try to wrestle? Is he going to – I tend to think he is. And Oliveira is one of the most difficult people in the UFC to top time. Um, yeah, it, for me, it's a really tough fight to pick a winner. I, I think from a betting perspective, it has to be dog or pass, dog or pass just due to the nature of how Oliveira fights. Yeah. 
I agree. And I, I like that. What do you think about the KO or, or sub? Do you think he wins by, de- you don't see him winning a decision, right? If this goes to the decision, it's probably Armin's fight, right? I, does he, does Oliveira ever go to decision? Like, I think he's, pro- and he's probably like not. I don't fights. even know. I think he's had like 40 fights and probably went to decision in like three of them or something. So like he's been, teams. he's, he's been, dude, he's been to decision four times and he's won three of them. So yeah, I, I don't see this going to decision, <laughs> long story short. Um, yeah. But I, I would guess Armin would, would be more likely to win a decision just because it's probably like him actually being able to stay on top and staying out of danger. Yeah. And Charles just not quitting and just riding bottom. Exactly. Bottom. Yeah. That's fair. Jav, what do you think for this one? You going with Dobronx or you going with Tarsukian? I mean, it, it's hard for me to bet against Oliveira at big chalk like that just because of how dangerous he is. Um, and, and yeah, he, he has that that x factor you know like he's super dangerous he believes in, in himself now and like he's so aggressive and we have seen sarukin getting clipped getting hurt getting knocked out in the original so it, it's not impossible for me to think that oliver is going to go out there and it's going to knock him out but i think that in the entire division i think makchev and um makchev and uh, sarukin are probably like the two the two hardest matchup for him so it's hard to pick him here because I think Sorokin's going to be able to take him down. I think he can potentially knock him down. He has some power on the feet. And he has, like, nasty ground and pound, like, pretty dangerous uh, when he gets on top. So, yeah, I, I think I think Armin's probably going to take this, which is annoying because I want Oliveira to win. He's one of my favorite fighters. But I, I can't really just bet with bias, like, you know, that that's not how we win money. Um, and I just stylist, stylistically, I just feel like it's a very hard matchup for for him. Uh, the under two point five is probably a good parlay piece, just because it's it's a Oliveira fight. Like you guys said, he always goes under. Um, but yeah, it's not impossible for me to see Sarukin riding a decision as well. So yeah, man, I'm gonna pick Sarukin. I, I guess he's gonna get a knockout here, but I'm not too confident about uh, either side. Betting wise, I think you gotta play Oliveira. I think Oliveira KO, Oliveira ITD makes sense, but everybody seems to be on him, which I don't like, and the line's not moving. So yeah, you know what that means. Yep. All right, Key, what are you thinking? Anything different here? Yeah, I think In- this is tough to call. Um, <laughs> tough, tough to bet if you're looking for uh, arm inside. Um, I, I don't think that you can confidently say, unless it is Islam, I don't think that you can confidently say that there's many people in the world period who should or could look minus 230 consistently um, against Charles Dubronx. I, I think that I played Charles KO at plus 800 for small. Um, I, I think that that's a good, good way to play it. Uh, we've seen Armin get bonked by uh, Joaquin uh, Silva. Um with that left hook, I think that Charles, uh, everybody saw the left hook he put on Chandler. Um, I think we could be in the first situ- same situation here. Um, I, I don't think that Charles is going to win a lot of minutes in this fight, though. Um, I think that Armin will have good top time. Um, and I think Armin, by decision, plus 300 on DK right now um, wow. is solid. Um, it was plus 320 earlier. Um I think that that's a way to play it. Plus three fifteen on bet online, actually. Um, so I think that that's a way to play it. But um, but yeah, it's it's a weird fight to call. Um, you, I wish we would have gotten to see more of that Darius and Armin fight play out a little more. Um, but yeah, so I'm hoping, and as a Charles fan, I'm hoping that he can get the KO here. But I, I think that Armin's going to be the minute winner here. Nice. All right, <clears throat> let's go to our next fight. We're almost there. Let's see. Next fight is a dude. All right, so this is a, a three round, a three fight, five round card. So we're gonna be up till two a.m. It sounds like watching this. Hopefully, they're making it worthwhile. Next fight is Justin Gaethje, twenty five and four. He's thirty five, five eleven with a seventy inch reach. Funny Max Holloway, twenty five and seven. He is thirty two, five eleven with a sixty nine inch reach. Right now, you can get guys anywhere from uh, you can get Gaethje anywhere from minus 150 to minus 175. You can get Max Holloway anywhere from plus 150 on uh, Betway to plus 130. Uh, Andrew, start us off first. What are you thinking here? Do you think uh, Max is going to be able to outlast Gaethje and put a pace on him over five rounds, or do you think the leg kicks of Gaethje are going to be too much here? 
Yeah, I, I'm picking Max here. I I think it's a again, it's a high variance fight, but there's a few things on the Max side that statistically, like I just can't ignore. He has much better striking defense than Gaethje. His output, his cardio, his pace are top notch. Could he have issues with leg kicks? Potentially. But also, he's fought Jose Aldo twice. He's fought Volkanovski three times, two of the best leg kickers in the history of that division. And, you know, he's won and held his own in fights like that. Gaethje, I also feel like later in his career, has gone away from the leg kicks a little bit. It's not to say that, you know, he can't land them here. It's not to say that they won't be an impact in the fight. But I think there's a lot on the Max side, too, that could, you could make a case to counter that. For example, Max is really good at going to the body. I feel like Gaethje doesn't like getting hit to the body. I also think, you know, it's just one of those things where if they're both going to throw and land a lot of strikes, or excuse me, if they're both going to throw a lot of strikes, I want the guy with the better defense, which is Holloway. I want the guy who you know is going to be more responsible in Holloway. I want the guy who – you know, his, there's no one who's going to out cardio or outpace him. Like you can't throw more strikes than him. You can't have better cardio than him. Like at, at best you could have even cardio to him, which I don't think like Gaethje's cardio is fine. It's, it's, I'd actually even go as far as say that it's good, but I think Max is in that top tier in terms of like output pace. I have concerns on the Max side, such as the leg kicks, but also um, I do think he's regressed a little bit. You know, he does have a lot of, he's younger than Gaethje, but he does have a lot of miles on him. That being said, I do think a slightly regressed version of Holloway still can and I think will win this fight. Nice. I like that. I like me too. I'm I'm thinking the same thing. I kind of think, like you said, I think the volume is going to make the difference here. I think going five rounds, that's going to be pretty much different. A lot of people are comparing this to the Poirier fight. I don't like doing that here. I think this is a completely different fight in a way. Um, I don't know. I think the Viam's going to win this fight as long as uh, Gaethje doesn't finish him. I don't think that's going to come. We haven't really seen like Mac. We saw we saw Max. People say in that Poirier fight, mostly they're pointing out like, oh, he doesn't look. He looks like the punches hurt more at 155. No shit, they're bigger guys. But it's not like he was like knocked around or anything like that. Um, Drav, what are you thinking here? Do you think Holloway or Gaethje? Yeah, I like Holloway. Uh, which which you guys are on this one? I just feel like he he can win by multiple ways. Like I think he can win by knockout. I think he can win a decision. I think he can submit JG. Maybe it's a hot take, but if anyone's grapple, it's gonna be him. And plus eleven thousand yeah, hot drive. Plus eleven thousand yeah. hot. Yeah, but I mean, I play Max Holloway. You guys know already. I made him my my free bet of the week. I also play his round prop, round three, one, round four, round five. You want to be on Max Holloway and, and the championship rounds, in my opinion. I think, like like Gamba said, he, he has the better cardio. Like, there's, I don't think Gagey cardio is bad, like like you said, but I, I think Max cardio is, like, elite, uh, probably one of the best ever in the UFC, but also he matches with his, like, insane volume and pace and pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, <coughs> I'm good. And he has You're that right. insane durability. What you said? You're all right. You're okay. I'm gonna take a little water. It's from, it's from taking up too much mic time, bro. <laughs> Hurry up, yeah. crank it out. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, I think he's more durable. They've both been in a lot of wars. Um. They they both took a lot of damage. KG is on the older side, uh, and, and he's very dangerous. Like he, he can knock him out, I guess. But I've seen a lot of people like saying that he's for sure gonna knock him out but we have never seen all the way getting knocked down knocked down or knocked out he, he got hurt multiple times in the party if i was a little bit worried because in the first two round i think he got he got hurt like four times that was a little bit crazy but he has the insane chin and insane recovery when he gets hurt like you guys talk about the leg kicks is my main concern but max does a good job at switching stances when he gets hurt to the legs uh, he can fight Southpaw here, which is going to legate the leg kicks from Gagey. Um, But he's better from the orthodox stance. And um, Gagey is not like a leg kicker like Volkanovski. He telegraphed he telegraph the leg kicks way more. And I think that <clears throat> when Gagey is going gonna to do like a big leg kick, I think Holloway is going to come back with like four or five punches. He's going he's gonna to do more combination. He's going to have more volume. He's going to have better cardio. And I think as the fight goes on, he's probably going to need to take a lot of damage early. But as the fight goes on, he's I think he's going to take over. I think the kick's going to be a good weapon from him too. Like, I think at distance, 
he can land some good head kicks. I think he can land good body kicks. I think the body shot's gonna be a good weapon also. Like like you like uh, Gamba said, uh, I don't think HG loves getting hit to the body. We know that Max gonna go to the body. I think he might try to mix in the takedowns and grapple a little bit just because I don't I'm not confident that he's gonna get takedowns, but if anyone does get takedowns, it's gonna be him and he's the much better grappler. I've seen Holloway roll some chokes, like he has good front chokes, like he did it uh, versus Poirier. He did he tried it against uh, the current zombie. And Gagey, when he gets hurt, like he's panicking a little bit, you know. And um, I, I can see where where he, he's getting hurt and he tries to shoot a takedown or he's on his knee or something and always just rolls a choke, you know. I think it's possible. I think he can knock him out, especially in the, in the later rounds. And you have some crazy props, man. The numbers are wide for me on the round two, uh, round three, four, five for all the way. Um, and also, he has been he has been scheduled for five rounds in his last in his last ten fights, you know. So and eight out of 10 times he went the, f- the full 25 minutes so the five rounds favor him like i said the volume the cardio the durability and yeah the poirier fight i think he could have won that fight if he didn't get caught with the knee in the fourth round like he was kind of taking over in the third round like he lost the first two he won the third round he kind of hurt a little bit poirier in that fight and in the fourth round he was winning the round and then he got caught with the knee at the like the last minute or so of the, of the round and his nose got bossed up and he started bleeding like crazy. He couldn't really see in his eyes. And like his face was full of blood and Poirier took over and he won that round. But like without that knee, that's all the way around in my opinion. And in the fifth, in the last round, he was doing super good. He was winning like the first two minutes. And then he started bleeding again, couldn't really see well. And yeah, Poirier won the fight. But I think on another day, he could have won. Uh, Poirier looked phenomenal in that fight too. There was prime Dustin Poirier. I don't think that's prime Justin Gage anymore. And every time in that fight, when Holloway was the one putting the pressure and putting uh, Poirier on the back foot, he was very successful. And Poirier was putting more pressure on Holloway, and he was more successful than him because of that. Gagey nowadays is more is more technical than he used to be, but he's more on the on the back foot, and he tried to counter people. Uh, that's going to be perfect for Holloway here. I think he's going to be the one putting the the pressure. I think he's going to land more, and I think he's better defensively, better cardio. And yeah, I think he's going to finish KG in the later rounds. So I'm very excited for this fight. I think it's going to be a banger. Uh, yeah, I got some crazy number. I got all the way up plus 235 and plus 170. Like that was just some crazy line. And the lines I've been moving down all week. I know it's a popular play, but it's just hard for me to see KG covering this price. He's going to need to do a lot of damage or he's going to need to be like the first guy to knock out all the way, which I just don't see happening. Also, always way more prepared now to move up in weight than he was back then versus a Pori. He looked like he put on the right size and he had a full camp to prepare. He had a little more, a little bit more time. So I feel like now you know what to expect and he's gonna be ready and he's gonna put a master class. I can't wait for this fight. That's an absolute banger. Key, anything different here? Anything else to add? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, I got Holloway at plus 200. Um, his KO at plus 1400 on DK was laughable. Um, I, I think that this is a Holloway spot. I went into tape thinking that I would have a Gaethje bet. I was wanting a Gaethje bet. Um, and I came away from tape uh, easily thinking that Holloway was a size. The side, I think they, the pace and pressure is going to be a little bit too much in rounds three, four, and five. Um, I think that if Gagey wants to play the the tag for tag game and back up a shit ton, I think that Max is going to pop out, pop out that jab. I think he's going to completely control the fight. Um, and people don't talk about it, but Gagey's chin is not something great. Like he's been wobbled in just about every one of his last four to five fights. Um, I'm not saying that Max is just going to put this guy out cold. Um, but to think that Max doesn't tag him or hurt him is a little crazy to me. So I think the Max is a side here outside of Gaethje um, looking great in round one and two, which I think that that is his path to justifying favorite price tag is around one round two knockout. And I think that you can get some good prices on that right now. But I think that if you're betting Gaethje here, you're hoping for a physicality difference and you're hoping for a huge power difference. And in my opinion, at minus 150, I'm not willing to see that. So props wise, I think Gaethje's playable, but money line, I think this is an easy Holloway bet. I agree. Um, <clears throat> all right. Next fight. Key, get ready because you're going to go again. Um, next fight, we have Wei Li Zhang versus Zhao Nan Yan. Is it Yan Zanan or Zanan Yan? Either way, Zanan Yan. Um, 
she is uh she's 17 and 3 she's 34 5 5 with a 63 inch reach she's fighting obviously uh Wei Li Zhang 24 and 3 34 5 4 with a 63 inch reach these women you can find um Yan anywhere from plus 385 to plus 350 you can find Zhang anywhere minus 426 to minus 550 uh key is it nasty work to use Wei Li as a parlay leg here yeah, I think that is nasty work. Um, and uh, in general, in these high level fights, it's hard to look minus 500. I mean, we're talking about UFC championship fights. It's, it's really tough to look minus 500 um, and to look wider than minus 500 in this case, if you think that there's any sort of value on this line, which I don't think so. Um, and minus 300, maybe you can make an argument and say that there's value to parlay her. A little bit, but minus 500, I don't think so. I think that she does get it done. I think that she looks good here. Um, I think that she's she has an obvious path wrestling. Um, I think their wrestling has leveled up over the years. Um, the clinic that she put on as far as I had her ITD there, that was just a beautiful performance all around, in my opinion. Um, I, I think that she's going to pass this test with flying colors here. I think that the matchup to make in this is Tatiana Suarez and her. I'm interested to see if they give Tatiana one more fight or if they just throw her right in into the next one. Um, I know she was supposed to fight Limos at 298. Um, I, I rate Tatiana pretty highly. I would want to see that fight. Um, and I think that that's a fight to make after here. Jan, I, I think that she's a she's a strong girl. Um, she fights aggressive. Um, but I, I just don't think that she has the skills to be Whaley. You got to have some sort of traits. You got to have something crazy. Um, I just don't think that she has it. Andrew, what do you think for this fight? You got an angle on Zhang versus Jan? Yeah, I, I like doesn't go. I feel like this one, this line is skewed because Zhang and Lamos went five rounds. And I don't think Zhang and Lamos goes five rounds at a high clip. Like just that iteration of the fight, it happened to go five rounds. Um, Zhang, big grappling path here on the feet. They both are very good strikers, physical, hit hard. Zhang is like a beast. I think we've seen uh, – not I think. I know we've seen uh, Yang get exposed on the ground before, so I think that's probably the path that Zhang will take because she seems to be a pretty high IQ fighter, and I do think on the ground, like she's not the type to just lay there. She's going to be putting ground and pound through your head. So I think the price is cheap on inside the distance. Um, and, you know, Zhang inside the distance – and fight doesn't go the distance. There isn't as there isn't enough of a discrepancy there for me to want to play Zhang inside the distance. I'd rather just have all my bases covered with fight doesn't go. I, I'm glad you said that. I mean, I'm on that exact line. I got it minus one twenty five on DraftKings. I think um, watching the top control time and the ground and pound that Carla Sparza had against um, Jan, and then comparing that to what Zhang's going to do to her with elbows and BJJ, honestly. I just think the, the the physicality, she's just way more nasty than she is. So I think once she gets Jan down, which we've seen her pretty poor takedown defense, gets exposed by Zhang and Zhang gets her down and gets her in whatever position she wants, she's going to sub her or ground and pound her, finish her in some way. Jav, anything different from you? Yeah, not really. I think fight doesn't go as probably to play. Um but yeah, don't play Whaley ITD. Like it's it's like the same number. I don't see Jan finishing her. I know Peg, you you love her power, but I I, <laughs> I, I just don't. I, I think I think she she could knock him knock her out. I I I don't think like it's impossible. But I just don't. Why think is that? that? Is it because of her power? Uh, no, no it's, more, it's more about her power and her precision. Uh, not her power, <laughs> her footwork and her precision, um, and the the way that how aggressive Willie is. So I could see her sniping her, but like, it's very unlikely. Will be like a counter right hand, like she did to, uh, like she did to Andraj. I just don't feel like it's very likely, but um, like you need to play five doesn't go rather than playing YD ITD with a slight difference. Um, yeah, I guess Young could win a decision if she can defend a takedown. It's not impossible for me to see that, but it's very hard to visualize because I think the physical, 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 um, is I don't know how to talk anymore. I, I think the strange um well that's the same guy that probably commented on our uh, on our tweet yeah, and he's yeah. here listening. So you're a fan, that's okay. Um and yeah, yeah so <laughs> I, I feel like at some point she's gonna be able to take her down. She's super aggressive. So when she's gonna get on top, we know that she has good ground and pound. She has a good submission game too. So uh and the times we have seen uh Jan on her back it doesn't look good. 
So yeah, man, w Willie should, should be fine here, but minus 500 or whatever it is now, gotta be dog or pass on the money line. I'm just not sure I'm gonna get there myself. Five dozen goes probably a better way to play that. All right, the, well, now we're at the main event. Uh, main event UFC 300 is Alex Poetom Pereira versus Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill. Uh, Jamal Hill is 12 and 1, 32, 6 4 with a 79 inch reach. Poetan is 9 and 2, 36, 6 4 with an 80 inch reach. Right now, the odds on these two guys you get Jamal Hill anywhere from plus 114 to plus 105. He's going to start turning to a favorite on Bet US, it looks like. Um, Alex Prayer, on the other hand, he's minus 123 to anywhere to minus 140. <laughs> Um, we'll just go round robin here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, we're gonna Andrew. We're gonna start with you. Um, what do you think for the main event here? They think I look like an off-brand you, which is funny. <laughs> yeah, I could, two New I York could, guys. <laughs> I could see a cousins type of thing, maybe somewhere down the line. <laughs> um, but I, I'm picking Jamal Hill to get it done. It's an interesting fight because you have. Prayer has come up to 205 recently. He kind of skipped the line in a sense at 185, got what I think to be favorable matchups, like just the type of fight he wants, which is a kickboxing match on the outside. The Jiri fight, I felt like Jiri was looking like the favorite in that fight. Um, and Prayer obviously has fight changing power. I do think he's a little hittable himself. I, I don't trust his durability. Jamal Hill coming off a major injury. He's not the most technical fighter, but he's extremely explosive. He hits hard. Um, I, I just like his offense. I like his cardio. You know, he proved he could fight at a pace against Glover Teixeira over five rounds. I, I think he's going to win this fight. I think he's going to knock um, Prayer out. I know some people are kind of talking about like, oh, will he wrestle? Will he not? Like, I predict he's not going to wrestle, and I predict he's going to win the fight on the feet. Joff, what do you think here? Yeah, I like Hill too. Like, I guess there's some worry about the, um, the injury and the layoff and everything, but I just feel like the, um, the 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 problem from the leg kicks of Pera is not going to be as much there than he's usually. He's not going to be able to use that weapon as much here because I think Hill's going to fight Southpaw here, which is going to be hard for him to get leg kicks like he like he usually does because he's more of a hard to duck fighter, um, and I think Hill Chin is very, very good. I, I think it's very good. I think he's the more durable guy. I think he threw way more volume. Like he put on a master class against Gilbert Teixeira. Uh, I bet him, I pick him in that fight. That was a crazy performance. Um, like I, I, people talking about the wrestling, like there's not going to be wrestling in that fight. Like I, I highly doubt it. It's going to be a striking fight. You have a guy in Hill who's younger, who has more volume, who has better cardio, who is more durable. And I think Pereira is more of at the end of his career, which for some people might not make sense because he's the champion and, uh, and he, everybody loves him and all that. But he took a lot of damage in his career. I don't think his chin is very good. I don't think he loves to get hit as much anymore. And um, yeah, man, he, he got touch up in a lot of fights that he still won. Like the, the Adesanya fight, he got knocked out pretty badly. And then against Blakovich, I don't think he looked that good. Um, and against Prohaska, I bet him in that fight. But again, he was kind of losing until he, he found a kill shot. Um, so yeah, I, I think Hill's gonna. I, I think he get, he's gonna jab him up. He needs to be careful about the left hook. I've seen him getting clipped with that. But um, yeah, I think Pera needs a KO here. If if somehow he go to decision, I have to favor Hill. Um, I, I think the volume's gonna be too much. I don't think he's gonna be scared from um, from uh, Polton and. Uh, yeah, I mean, Hill's striking is very good, and I think his boxing is super, super crips. Uh, I, I think he's going to touch him up, go in the pocket, trade with him. It's going to be dangerous. It's going to be a banger for the time it lasts, but I, I trust Hill Chin more in this type of fight, and I think his striking is super good. So, yeah, I, I think he's going to find a knockout here. Key, okay, what are you thinking here? Same thing as everyone else. I kind of think we're all on the same side here, unfortunately. Yeah. Unless I you think... got something different. I think that this is a hill spot. Um, I think that Pereira, um, like Drive and Gomez mentioned, I think that Pereira has gotten older. Um, I mean, he's close to turning 37. Um, and 
over the years, I mean, I said it at during our UFC 295 podcast, like him gaining the light heavyweight title in the UFC is probably one of the greatest um, achievements being physically out of his prime, in my opinion. This is not the same guy that was in glory, in my opinion. Um, doesn't no, have the same. Well, I mean, the so power is. Yeah, the power is still there, but like Pegger just said, the speed is not the same at all. This is not the same guy. Um, so honestly, it's amazing what he's done. Um, being able to take Jan to split and win, I think you can still argue over who actually won that fight. But I bet him pretty big against Yuri, and he came through there. Um, but the whole time, my asshole was puckered. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, this was. <laughs> I mean, he, he's just getting tagged. I mean, everybody's seen the clip versus Jan where Jan is hitting him with like a three punch run, running combo and Alex just like raises his hands after after eating like the whole combo. Um, I, I think that Alex, the chin we saw versus the Bruno in the Bruno Silva fight, Bruno going southpaw gave him some problems. Um, he had to go to that lead leg kick and, and that's just a little more telegraphed. It's a little more slower. It doesn't have as much whip to it. Um, I, I think that pause. But but I, I think that um I think that Hill being out of Southpaw is gonna give him some problems. And the straight shots from Hill, you just can't deny it. I mean, they they just have insane pop on him. Yeah. And Alex is so wide with his hands, it's almost like he he's still thinking about using kickboxing gloves. Um, because his hands are so wide. And I think that Hill's just gonna snipe him right down the middle with the left hand. I think he's gonna put him out cold. People are forgetting that he damn near got put out. If there was 10 more seconds in that first out of Sanya fight in the first round, he probably goes out there. Um, yeah, he went yeah. out in the second fight. Um, I mean, here he almost put him out. Yeah, I mean, over and over again, he's just playing with fire. Eventually, he's going to get burned. He's already gone burned once. I think that he's going to get burned at light heavyweight, and I think that it's here. So I think that Jamal Hill is a guy. Um, it has, it feels like a, almost like a Taporia fight week, weirdly. Yep. Like you just feel. Like he's just gonna get the win, um, outside of all the tactical reasons, but just or like it just feels like he's gonna get it done, um, and it sucks because I'm a Poetan fan, but I mean you, you can't deny the holes here, and the age is just such a concern. I think that he'll put some out cold. I think that Poetan maybe gets one more fight in, um, but yeah, this talk of him going from 300 to 301, I mean it's just it's crazy shit. Um, but yeah, regardless, I think that he'll get it done. Um, yeah, Hill KO, Hill money line, however you want to flip it. I, I think that's yeah. I agree with you. Just to add a few things, you know, like uh, Pereira's allergic to jabs, like kind of like you said, just to piggyback on a few things. I think the clinch work from Pereira will work a little bit better. If there is a way for him to win, it's going to have to probably be in the clinch or with that check hook. I think Alex Pereira probably has the better distance management, probably has a little bit better footwork. Uh, he's obviously got the leg kicks, and he's got a we're, – we're seeing Hill off an injury layoff. But I just think Jamal Hill, he's so much quicker. He's clearly the better athlete right now. I mean, he's got a few holes in his game. He holds his hands down, whatever it is. But I think his jab punches and his straight shots are elite. And the way he throws them, the angles he throws them from, he's going to catch Alex Pereira. And like we've seen, he's been being catch and caught by guys all similar in the weight class. And it's just a matter of time before the chin gives. Um, I think he's faster, more dynamic Hill. It's another thing where it's like, dude, I'm the biggest Poetan fan. I'm from New York. I'm like, I grew up in Danbury, Connecticut, where his gym is now. I'm the biggest Poetan guy. All my friends are too. They're all betting on Poetan. I got kicked out of the group chat this week because I'm betting Jamal Hill and I'm going to be playing Hill by KO. It's just because like, just because I bet Hill doesn't mean I'm not a fan. It's just the better side. It just, that's what makes sense. So we're in the money-making business. Play Jamal Hill money line. Play Jamal Hill KO. And if you want to get even more cheeky, play KO in round two. Um, all right, guys, that's the that's the full breakdown here for the show. Real quick, like we always do every week, we're just going to go through our BTL parlay. Uh, Gambus, I'm not sure if you've seen the show before. We just go around. We all pick one leg in a parlay. We put it all together. We put a little graphic together and just track it week by week. I think right now, I think it's 10 in 10. Oh, no, maybe it's, a, no, it's a 12 and 15. And I think it's plus 14 units, so it's still positive. It's just a way of us to give back to the fans for watching the show. Um, who wants to start first? Who's got a leg they're ready to give? Um, oh, I'll, I'll go. Um, right, I'll go got, with bro? Jamal Hill money line plus 112. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, I'll go I'm next. Gonna go, I'm gonna oh, go okay. last. I'm gonna go last. You guys can go. Right. I don't, I'm, not sure I'm gonna I'm give gonna. all right. I'm gonna go under one and a half for um, nickel and Brundage minus 290. Uh, it's minus 365. 
All right. Well, then I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. Yeah, because we got the plus side to it with Key. Going back, you can go next if you want. You can take like any over under. Uh, We're using any you want or um, our money line. Uh, I'll go with um, Zhang doesn't go the distance at minus one thirty five. Um, I don't. Oh yeah, it, it just got hit when we were talking. It's minus one fifty five on uh, Bet Online now. Um, yeah, yeah. That's I, fine. I, I, I can parlay the fight doesn't go on Bet Online. Uh, if I go under four point five at minus one twenty five, is that still work? You like it? Sorry, what, what was that? I, I misheard. Um, the, the under four point five is minus one twenty five. Do you like this better because we can parlay it on Bet Online? Yeah, that, that works. I right, go good. Um, and I'm going to take, yeah, I'm not sure if I like on Josh money line better or the under 2.5, but I'm going to take one of these key, which one you like better. You like on better, right? Yeah. All right. Let, let me take on Josh minus 137. Like, All right, so it, guys, to go over that again, we got Jamal Hill money line plus one twelve. We got under one and a half Nickel Brundage minus three sixty five. We got uh, under four and a half for Wei Li versus Jan, um, and then we uh, what is that minus one twenty five? And then we got Andrade yeah. money line minus one thirty seven. What's the total? Plus seven forty one. Plus seven forty one. All right, guys, that's the show. Uh, Andrew, obviously, thank you for joining us. It's great to have you. Um, you got any you want to plug anything or just say whatever you got, you telegram, whatever you use. No, just thank you guys for having me. Um, everyone, make sure to like and subscribe to this video. And uh, Appreciate yeah, it. thanks again, guys. Have fun and this weekend. You got it. You obviously got a show too, right? Your show is usually what is it, Thursdays, right? Thursdays uh, or Fridays, Fridays at nine. All right. Fridays at nine. You guys can find him on his channel. Um, uh, Pegasus picks. Obviously follow me on Twitter, telegram. I put all my picks in the telegram Jack everywhere else. Um, you go ahead. Key. Yeah. Um, uh, key three picks, um, dub club. Uh, you can sign up for 1250 a month right now. Uh, switching to $20 a month after this event. Uh, dope discord, uh, exclusive community chat. I drop prize picks, underdog fantasy, Better fantasy, book bets, DFS cores, live bets. We have everything in the Discord. Um, good group of guys, good group of smart guys. Uh, so, yeah, use that free trial on my link on my Twitter at Key3Picks and uh, come have some fun with us. Job, you go. Yeah, so you guys know you can find me on Twitter, Dravion underscore. You can find the link, the link of my dub club where you can find all my bets. Um, you can join my free Telegram too. And, uh, yeah, I have some big bets for UFC 300, a lot of spot that I'm liking. So I think it's a good way. I think it's a good card. I think we're going to make a lot of money. Uh, Andrew, thanks for coming on the show. It's fun to to have you on for this card, uh, the, the, the big card uh, of the year, and probably the biggest card of the last two, three years. So I'm excited for it. I hope we all make money and we all cash these tickets. So. All right, guys. Peace.